Hello fellow artists and welcome to episode 11 of TED Talks Art and today's topic is the artist's motivation. Now I think this is uh, arguably the most important thing, um, what motivates an artist that will determine both short term and long term an artist's uh, goals, whether it's career, technique, methodology, style, genre, um, all these things based on what is the paramount motivation behind it. I think the starting off with the most common or universal one would be simply the artist's motivation for art itself, being passionate about the act of doing art. That's probably the single most um, common and important motivation. And if you have that and no, nothing else, but you have that in spades, that's probably more that's more than enough that's plenty because it, it determines how much time and effort you sacrifice and how you prioritize your life and your approach to how you learn and your desire to grow as an artist which also impacts how you grow as a person and it is regardless of if it is a, a formal thing in the sense of you're earning a living from it or it's something you do for just pure enjoyment, even that can be misconstrued because it's, and it's understandable, I guess, but if you say you're an artist, then yeah, the assumption is you're making a career out of it. And for a lot of us, that's what we're hoping to do. Why? Because we would rather be doing art, and the way to do that is to make a living off it. But that's not exclusive. You know, there's plenty of amazing phenomenal artists who aren't necessarily doing it for money or getting paid for it but it's a still a huge part of who they are and their life I, i've talked about it at, at length in different uh, aspects about that but again just in a nutshell if you're very passionate about of the act of drawing or active modeling or the act of uh, sculpting you know whatever it may be or crafts um if it's something that you just live and breathe, um, then that's the single most important uh, motivation as an artist. Because, again, you're putting all this time and energy into it. Now, how about beyond that? I would say for myself, um, there is three very powerful motivators behind what I do and why I am an artist. How I identify as one and in how that motivates even the work that I do and the choices that I make. So certainly the first one I talked about, that applies. And that's something that is especially there even when you're starting out and you're not really sure about a lot of things. Like I had no idea where my career path was going to go, but all I knew was I loved to draw, and somehow I want to make a way to make that happen and be drawing as much as I can and somehow make a living off of it. But this, you know, But I didn't have any answers. You know, I do now. 20 years later, but the thing that hasn't changed that I've mentioned before is my love for drawing has never changed. My hunger for drawing has never changed. It just continues to grow and it's never satiated. But along the way, um, you know, two more powerful motivators that aren't necessarily directly art related, but are very powerful to determining and making all these choices. Uh, one, I've talked a little bit in other videos about how people's beliefs and principles um, certainly also influence who they are as artists, the choices they make, and even the type of art they do. Uh, and I've mentioned, I think even in the previous uh, uh, video, how you know I'm, I'm a firm believer that God created us and gave us these gifts or talents, whatever you want to call it, but they're not really ours, they're on loan, and meaning we're, we're supposed to be stewards of these things, uh, use it to serve others, and, and to serve him, in terms of uh, where I'm at. Now, I mean, I've mentioned talent before, but what I'm talking about is um, that principle also fuels the idea of working really hard. So I'm not talking about, oh, you're just naturally born with something. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, because people who are can squander it, right? And that's uh, that would be a shame in those instances. So that's that's a huge motivator even beyond 
the the joy and desire to do art because it's this um, principle of whatever I'm doing, whether it's recognized or not, whether it's visible to others or I'm alone in my thoughts, that anything related to my art and being an artist is is essentially just a dedication uh, to God and I give it to Him. Um, so that coupled with, of course, being passionate about art is dual purpose. It's uh, compounded. I mean, I could take it even further than that, uh, that uh, analogy. You know, if if God is the creator of all things, then and if we are made in His image then he's an artist because he creates. And therefore, to be in his image is to be a reflection of that, which is to create. So th there you can bring that back to art as well. The third very powerful motivator for me is family. And I don't just mean immediate family, like my wife and kids. Certainly that's powerful enough too, because if you, you, know, you, love, you love your family, you'll do what it takes to uh, support them and you know and sacrifice but what i'm talking more about is is legacy and goes beyond generations and this relates to the immigrant story and what i mean by that is regardless of age generation and culture there's some very common and consistent um, things related to the immigrant story and what is that immigrant story i'm talking about and when I say immigrant story, I mean people who come from another country and typically come to North America for the purpose of a better life. And a better life for who? Themselves, yes, but usually it's beyond themselves, it's their children. right? So if any of you who are children of immigrant parents, which I am, that is a, that is a very relatable and common scenario. And what is that scenario? The parents leave the own home country, usually because of what? The country is worse off, it's usually more poor, and that's usually the result of war. And to, to make a safer and more um, peaceful and joyful life for their children, they make the bold move to literally leave their comfort zone, come to a country where they probably don't have very little to no money, and usually end up working in a job that was less in status and in pay to what they could do in their home country. Or in some cases, there wasn't any job, so they had no choice. And they may be taking jobs that aren't necessarily uh, personally satisfying, and usually they're not. right? And, th and this is where stereotypes are born, because there's some truth to stereotypes, but to go beyond that, it's to make it more um, beneficial. Is, is the reason why for these common things. So for example, you know, here's a joke I was told growing up since I'm Korean, is uh, why don't Koreans play uh, professional hockey? Because whenever they reach the, the end of the rink, they open up a corner store. It's a little racist. It's funny. I think it's funny. But what is the, there's some truth to it. And what's the truth uh, that's speaking there? That many of that generation either own a corner store, a convenience store, or a laundromat, dry cleaner. And why is that? Because all these Koreans had this common goal of wanting to own a convenience store? No, it's because that was the most accessible means in order to provide for their family. So you could have someone who was a businessman, a doctor, maybe even an artist, but gave that all up, and usually not because there was no choice, and did this job. And so it may not be personally satisfying, yet we also hear stories of these people working so hard and actually ne not necessarily even be embittered and could be even find some amount of peace or joy in it. Why? Because the motivation wasn't the job itself. The motivation was I'm giving this, uh, I'm determined to give this better life to my kids. So my parents are no different in that regard. What is unique about them is I didn't grow up with a typical immigrant story, right? My f parents came very early. My father became a doctor on the West Coast, and they also immigrated very early, you know, early 60s. In fact, my father came to the States in the late 50s. So what happens when the influx of Koreans come to Vancouver and they don't speak the language and they want the comforts of home and something familiar? 
if they're sick, they go to a doctor, who would they rather see? A Korean doctor. Are there many Korean doctors? No. So it was very um, beneficial and profitable for my father and my family. Yet it doesn't change the fact that the reasoning is the same. So just the just because my father was able to be a doctor, on the one hand, that seems like, oh, that's, that's not the norm for that generation to be able to immigrate and become a doctor. But what's exactly the same still is the desire for a better life. My father left the country, home country at 18, right, and just struck it out on his own, worked his tail off, and sacrificed. Um, um, so on the one hand, it's like, wow, I, I had probably a more comfortable upbringing than many of my generation. The flip side to that, though, is my father, you know, passed away when I was very young, when I was about 15. And that certainly changes your outlook in life and what matters to you. But it also introduced a new struggle because if my mother grew up with the same way, now she's experienced a brand new struggle to want to have a better life for her three boys. And that's now as a, as a widow. And she was in her early 40s at that point. And so I'm in my 40s now, so it really hits home. And I kind of imagine, well, what that would be so difficult and scary. But that mentality stayed the same. Whether moving to the new country and doing well to now being a widow, still the same uh, motivation as I'm doing this for my kids. So that's my way of also showing my gratitude to my parents. It's not only that they've... They modeled and by example, even though I haven't gone, you know, grew, being raised in Canada, you know, we're not experiencing war and that sort of thing. So there's a tendency that, yeah, we are, will be a little softer. Each generation is maybe a little softer and more entitled than the previous. But it's not impossible to kind of learn the lessons that they learned. And so what I have realized is by working hard, it's I'm not only following my parents' example, but it's my way of showing gratitude for their sacrifice. But it doesn't end there. Now that I have kids, I'm paying that forward. I'm continuing that um, mindset and motivation to sacrifice for the family. So it's now compounded because it's on the one hand out of gratitude and because it was instilled it was instilled by my parents. But at this now it's being passed on to my kids. I want to model that for my kids, but outside of that, it's of course because you want to support them. And so it's very powerful now because whereas the previous generation and even generations now who are going through that same experience where the parents sacrificed for their kids, right? Regardless of age and era and country, those similar circumstances, especially if it's coming from uh, a poor country or unstable or war-torn, a lot of those common things come about. So if the previous generation or the, or the immigrants, the first generation, is able to do all this and sacrifice with a, and doing a job that they don't necessarily in, um, didn't pick by choice, think of how powerful the, now that is for my generation and the next generation to be motivated to sacrifice for the family but you get to do the job you love. So for me, it's uh, that trifecta of motivation, right? Being passionate as an artist, um, feeling conviction and belief that uh, you know it's a way to also honor and serve God with what He's blessed me with, and then then this idea of being motivated by family previous generations and the generations in the future and passing and paying it forward and working hard and sacrificing for them out of love for family but also as a life lesson to pass these things on so that they will do the same for their lives and for the future of their children my grandchildren so um, it's not always uh, directly art related but it's but at the same time we're human and we're living this life and we have feelings, we have thoughts, we have goals, we have relationships. So everything is so interconnected. I mean, at least what we can relate to with art is the, especially more now than ever, is the designs or 
the stories or films or comics or games that really we relate to, it's because they connect to us emotionally. And that's usually tied into human experience and relationships, in other words, life. So these, I would say, there's more, but I would say these are the three major motivations in my life. And they both directly and indirectly, explicitly and implicitly impact who I am as an artist, the type of art they do, how I go about in learning, and the choices I make both in the art itself, but also in short term and long term as it relates to my life and goals, and that juggling act of different priorities that conflict sometimes, but you always make a way and put time in for the things that are important for you. And that's not without sacrifice. But, um, oh, I just remembered. Um, so just to kind of couple that immigrant story experience, in recent years, I've seen a, an influx of students specifically from Brazil at both the schools I teach at. And it doesn't matter who they are or where they're from. So far, it's been very consistent. Every student that I've met from Brazil, working hard and doing well. Why is this? It's because they're making a huge risk, taking huge chance and sacrifice and leaving their country. Why? Because the the, the climate there, political, social, right, um, industry-wise. But the problem, the other next challenge is uh, it's more expensive as an international student. On top of that, the exchange exchange rate and currency is steeper. A lot of these students also have to do take jobs while they're going full-time school. I tell them that I, I, I give them credit and kudos because I know myself, I would never have been able to do a full-time job and go to art school. That's, that would have been difficult. But I'm seeing students do that and excelling. Why? Because there's so much that they're sacrificing. And especially if they're for parents or, or supporting them. And in some cases, it's they're coming for the reverse reason, to support their parents in the future. Powerful motivations. So again, regardless of age and era and culture, that immigrant story is very powerful because of this desire to do this for family against all odds. And so they don't take things for granted. So more power uh, to the Brazilians. Um, but yeah, that was a very specific and more recent example that echoes my own. So I hope that uh, you know it was beneficial for some of you at least in some regard, some things will, you'll relate to more than others, depending on your situation. But I hope that uh, does help. Until next time, take care.